a few videos ago I asked you if you wanted a video on um, free motion tension. So um, Nicola said yes, so I decided that that would be the next sort of mini tutorial. Um, I've got an example of a quilt here um, where I free motion quilted it and as you can see from the front it all looks pretty good. So the stitch, we're not worried about whether the stitches are even but whether we can see this, the um, thread from the back show up. So I've actually got orange thread on the back and blue thread on the front so you should be able to tell. Now this quilt is also an example of bad tension because if we flip it to the back we have, you can just see the blue dots showing through on the quilting. Um, some of it is really quite bad where you've got the eyelashing effect. So um, like around this area here um, you can see the blue thread from the front and it's kind of pulling it through and making those little almost like extra stitches in a way and what that means is that the thread on the on the top is too loose so this is the back and if it's been pulled to the back that bobbin thread is either too tight or the top thread is too loose and it's pulling that thread through all the layers. If this was the front it would be the other way around so if you could see the bobbin thread it would mean that the top thread was too tent it was too tight or that the bobbin thread was too loose. Now normally you would only affect only change the tension on the top thread if you possibly can. Um, the bobbin thread is a little bit harder to adjust, you can do it, um, but it's a lot more sensitive so I recommend if you're not familiar really with altering the tension on the bobbin tension and that you try the top thread that first and then only sort of go to that as a last resort. So an example of good tension would be where you've got orange, my orange thread on the orange on the back and then in the same spot the blue on the blue so what happens is the stitches are formed evenly and where they join is in the batting in the middle um, so that that's that's perfect tension and that's what we're aiming to do I'm going to show you how I adjust the tension on my machine and most machines are going to be a bit different to mine because mine's um, like a, a manual machine um, so a lot of the time you can do the, adjust the tension on your machine electronically so this here is my machine. It's not currently threaded. I'm just going to quickly show you how I thread this. I like to keep my thread on a cone even if it's just the small spools because my little spool uh, stands here aren't very long. Um, for example, if I put a, a cone on there, that's not, not too bad but it does rattle a little bit. Um, the smaller cones are worse, so, uh, the smaller um, spools are worse. So I use this thread uh, stand here and then loop it through it here and it helps with the uh, tension on the machine. So this is my free motion foot. I'm just going to put that on my machine. And over here is my feed dogs. Um, so I'm just going to put them all the way down. I've got um, navy blue thread. I'm just going to go put that in the bobbin. It's always a good idea to test before you start quilting with a mini quilt sandwich. So I just use a little piece of batting that I have left over and I just sandwich it between two of the scraps. So for mine I'm just going with this yellow piece at the front and this stripe is on the back and then I can test my tension. So I can test my tension by putting the foot down and then just, just sort of doing a spiral or some of the kind of meandering or something with a curve because that's usually where the problems happen. So if we just do a quick circle for now. The top thread is looking good. I can't see any of that navy blue showing through but on the back you can see little white dots. So it's not awful but it's not perfect. So that means that my top thread is just a little bit too loose and it will vary a little bit depending on how old, how old your needle is, what kind of what type of thread you have in your machine, whether you've got polyester or cotton, even the manufacturers can make a difference sometimes and also the thickness of the thread. Um, so it, that's why you need to do a little test. So because I know my th tension is a little bit loose, I actually need to dial mine up. So mine's numbered from one to six, yours might be um, done in slightly different increments and I'm actually going to do mine as a quarter turn so if you were testing your tension and you found it to be the same you'd probably want to try a couple of points if you're doing it on an electronic machine so at the minute mine is reading that mine is at just over three uh, actually it's on four so if I'm going to do a quarter turn 
So I, I made sure my fingers were in position here and I turned it so that it was from 12 o'clock to um, sort of 3 o'clock on there. So let's have another look again. <clears throat> I'm just going to practice exactly the same shape as I did before. I should also mention that if you are planning on quilting with flannel, then do these tests with flannel as well. That was a circle before, and that's the circle now, and I've still got a little bit of white showing through. So I'm going to go another quarter of a, a step. So I'm going to make it another quarter of a step tighter on the top. So if you were looking, doing it on your machine, you might want to dial it up again, another couple of, of uh, stages upwards. So I've got my fingers at um, 3 and 9. I've now got it at 12, and so I'm turning mine to the right, as in lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. And we're just going to test again. I actually did this twice more in the end, so that was after the third attempt. And then after the fourth attempt, those little white stitches are a little bit less. But on the front, you've got to be careful because I can almost start seeing those little navy dots coming through. So it's about kind of getting the balance right. So it could be that I actually need to t tighten it a little bit more, or even actually look at my bob intention if that wasn't if it was bothering me too much. But it's most important to get it right on the top. If you find that you're quilting points and you're having trouble with it um, pulling the stitches in the points, that's pretty normal. And that's actually the reason why I got this machine is because I quilt too fast. Um, and this machine will go will stitch a lot faster than my other machine would. And the problem is it kind of enables me to keep making those sort of mistakes. And by quilting in the points quickly, it almost it's almost as if it's skipping a stitch. So when you quilt into a point, you have to kind of pause a little bit and then move out with that stitch. Um, but that's how I adjust the tight tension on the machine. If I had it the other way around, where the bobbin thread was showing through at the top, I would be um, loosening my top stitching at my uh, top thread so I would be turning it to the left on my machine by a quarter of a turn each time and if you were doing it on an electronic machine you would turn it down by maybe 0.2 of a, a step each time but do remember to make the quilt sandwiches they're really helpful and it'll help you get your quilting right first time. <laughs>